So your stomach is pretty amazing. I'm just gonna put that out there. You can throw a whole bunch of food into it and this little pouch in your belly turns that collection of pizza rolls and pasties into something that your body can continue to digest and pull nutrients from to keep you alive. It's awesome. What I didn't expect to learn this month is that some of the major experiments that have helped us understand how the stomach works happened here in Michigan, specifically on a beautiful island in Lake Huron called Mackinac Island. But these experiments didn't involve like a doctor listening to somebody's stomach gurgle, and they weren't even autopsy related. They involved a young man with a hole in his stomach and a surgeon named William Beaumont with, dare I say it, perhaps too deep a curiosity. It's story time. I'll introduce the young man in a minute, but I start with Beaumont's name because the first time I heard this piece of science history, my reaction was, wait, that William Beaumont? And if you've ever lived in Southeast Michigan, you might be having a similar reaction. This is the guy the Beaumont Health System was named after. They recently merged with another group and rebranded as Corwell Health, but before then, Beaumont had some eight hospitals and more than a hundred outpatient locations. So growing up in Metro Detroit, I knew Beaumont's name literal decades before I knew what he did. Turns out William Beaumont, well, some sources call him the father of gastroenterology, the study of the digestive system. One article I read even called him the world's first great experimental gastroenterologist. So I see why you would name a health system after him. And I absolutely agree that he made some major positive contributions to the field of medicine. But his methods were a bit disturbing and at minimum, ethically questionable. I'm actually gonna begin this story not with William Beaumont, but with a young French Canadian man named Alexi St. Martin, who has a stunning first name, if I do say so myself. I also recognize that I am anglicizing his name quite a bit, and that's because although I am learning to speak French right now, I am not very good at it. Back in 1822, Alexi had recently arrived on what's now Mackinac Island, Michigan. Mackinac Island is a beautiful island in Lake Huron, and at this time it was home to a military fort, plus quite a lot of fur traders. Alexi himself was a voyager, which meant he canoed around, picking up and delivering furs. Well, that June, Alexi had a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. He was in a store run by the American Fur Company with quite a few other people, and somehow somebody's gun accidentally went off and Alexi was shot in the torso from about three feet away. On the scene arrives the only physician on the island, an army doctor in his late 30s named William Beaumont. Born in Connecticut, Beaumont had been a surgeon's mate during the War of 1812 and had recently re-enlisted in the army and been stationed at Fort Mackinac. I'm not gonna read you the detailed description that Beaumont wrote about Alexi's wounds because it is, well, detailed, but here are the two things you need to know. One, Beaumont records a fairly large stomach wound, one big enough to poke a finger through. I know. Second, he wrote this. In this dilemma, I considered my attempt to save his life entirely useless. But it wasn't useless. Alexei survived. Although his life certainly looked different, his wound came with numerous complications. And even once he was stable and back on his feet, his body didn't go back to the way it had been before. As his tissues repaired themselves, he developed what's called a fistula. A fistula is just a connection between two body parts that aren't typically connected. Alexei's was a gastrocutaneous fistula, where his stomach attached itself to his skin and possibly nearby muscles. As a result, the big thing was, even when Alexei had otherwise recovered, there was a hole almost an inch wide straight into his stomach from the outside. Like if you didn't keep it adequately bandaged, some of the food he ate would just come out. Because of the complications that came with this, Alexei wasn't able to keep his job and he fell deep into poverty. Although the community at Mackinac tried to support him, they only had so much money. So eventually they considered just sending him back to Quebec a significant journey for a guy who was already in bad health. 
So about 10 months after Alexei's injury, William Beaumont invited the young man to come live with him and his family, and offered Alexei support and treatment. Beaumont wrote in his journals that this was a charitable decision, and he wanted to keep offering Alexei medical care, or at least make the guy comfortable, and it made a huge difference. Under Beaumont's supervision, Alexei slowly got better, and by the following summer, so about two years after his accident, he was able to get around fairly well, stomach hole and all. Once Alexei got better, he ended up working for the Beaumonts in exchange for room, board, and some income. And that might have been the end of the story if it weren't for that fistula. At some point, William Beaumont looked at Alexei St. Martin and realized, hey, I could run some experiments. After all, people didn't know a lot about digestion during this time, and who was Beaumont to look a gift horse in the mouth? Or a gift stomach hole in the stomach hole? So Beaumont got Alexei's permission and in 1825 started running experiments on him, using the hole in his stomach to try and better understand how digestion worked. Often this looked like him tying little pieces of food on a string and then lowering that food into the fistula. Then he would take it out at timed intervals, see how digestion was going, and put it back in. These experiments started on Mackinac Island, but they didn't stop there. Beaumont's army career moved him around quite a bit, and he got Alexei to agree to travel with him, just so Beaumont could keep learning stuff. And this is where things start to get, in my opinion, a little sketchy. At one point in 1825, the two men are in New York, near the US-Canada border, and Alexei decides, hey, you know what? I'd, I'd actually like to go home for a bit. So he leaves for Canada, and Beaumont cannot track him down. End of story, not so much. While he waited for Alexei, Beaumont ended up submitting the results of the experiments he'd already done to a medical journal. At this point, he had mostly done just enough work to realize he had a lot more to learn about digestion. And writing to the journal's publisher, he said this, I regret very much that it is not in my power to offer more varied and satisfactory results. But unfortunately for me, though fortunately perhaps for some more capable person than myself to make experiments, St. Martin has absconded and gone to Canada at the very time I was commencing a number of more interesting and important experiments upon the process of digestion. And I very much fear I shall not be able to recover possession of him again. He was unwilling to be experimented upon, though it caused him but little pain or distress. In other words, it seems to me like Beaumont's primary concern was not, oh no, Alexei, I hope he's doing well, but more of, oh no, my experiments. Maybe somebody else is gonna experiment on him now instead. Which like, interesting. Later, Beaumont did hear back about Alexei's whereabouts from a guy named W.W. Matthews, who often traveled into Canada looking to employ more voyagers. And Matthews wrote this. While in Canada last winter, I succeeded in finding your ungrateful boy, Alexei St. Martin. He is married. I did all I could to bring him up, but could not succeed. But my endeavors cost me $14. I will be obliged if you will let me know by return of boat whether I shall do anything more to get him back and how I shall get my money back, as the company will not allow it to me. So it seems like Alexei didn't want to keep doing this, or at least was not super committed to the idea. In Canada, he'd gotten married, had a couple of kids, and resumed work as a voyager for another fur company. But somehow, people like Matthews did ultimately persuade Alexei to come back to Beaumont, this time at a fort in what's now Wisconsin, and to bring along his family. Over the coming years, Alexei worked as a paid employee of the Beaumonts. He did various household tasks, seemed in great health, fistula and all, and did continue to travel with the doctor as part of their employment agreement. Of course, and surely to Beaumont's joy, the experiments did continue, and there's also at least one incidence of Beaumont, quote, exhibiting Alexei in front of various medical societies. Ultimately, from 1825 to about 1833, so about nine years, William Beaumont conducted a whopping 238 experiments on Alexei St. Martin. He confirmed previous evidence that an important part of your stomach juice is hydrochloric acid, which breaks down your food. 
He did the first comprehensive study of how the stomach moves, learning how a churning motion helps digest things. He learned the speeds at which different foods break down. Like, maybe surprisingly, he found meat was easier to digest than vegetables, and oily food was particularly hard to process. And he learned how stress can affect digestion. I mean, it is hard to do 238 experiments without learning something. And these results were great and did teach us a lot. But also, oh my gosh. Now, here's the thing. I know that medicine and experimentation in the 1820s was a bit more Wild West. And you could absolutely argue that nobody was forcing Alexei to do these things. They didn't, like, physically drag him back to Beaumont. And in his employment contract, he agreed to have these experiments done. But historians have also spent a lot of time speculating about this relationship. For one, they've posed the question of why experienced army doctor William Beaumont never closed up Alexei's fistula and let him keep living his life with this fairly large hole in his abdomen. One officer at the time even reported that Beaumont had been thinking about these experiments since the beginning and initially treated Alexei with that goal in mind, which would be disturbing. But I also read in Beaumont's diaries that he just couldn't close up the hole. At one point, he even considered maybe cutting the edges of the wound and just stitching it all back together, but writes that Alexei wasn't up for that. Which, like, okay, fair. That aside, the more obvious thing might be that there's a very unbalanced power dynamic here. Historians have pointed out that Beaumont provided food, lodging, income, and medical care to Alexei St. Martin. So it's hard to say if Alexei was fully on board with these experiments, or if he just felt backed into a corner. Especially because he didn't seem to be interested in science, and he may have not had a good way to provide for his family without this job. So maybe this just seemed like the only good way to make ends meet. In any case, in the end, Alexei did properly get out of there. In 1834, he took a trip back to Canada and was supposed to meet Beaumont in New York afterwards. But he never showed. Eventually, the doctor got a letter from Alexei saying that, actually, his wife thought he would be more profitable at home on the farm and that the St. Martins sent their love and gratitude. <clears throat> Here we have his true character, journaled William Beaumont. He thought this was a deeply ungrateful move and was a ploy to get more money out of him. And if he ignored Alexei, the man would become poor and, quote, <clears throat> willing to recant his villainous obstinacy and ugliness. And then I shall be able to regain possession of him again, I have no doubt. I know many of us aren't at, like, our best when we're angry, but... Whew. In any case, although Beaumont tried again many times over the coming years to get Alexei back, that was the end of their working relationship. Alexei went on to live his life. Sadly, it does seem like he spent his last years in poverty, because there's record of a letter that Alexei wrote to one of Beaumont's sons where he's asking for charity. But in the end, all the way in 1880, Alexei St. Martin ended up passing away in Canada at about 80 years old, fistula and all. Also, this detail feels like it says a lot. After Alexei died, his family actually waited until his body started to decompose, to bury it, in order to stop doctors from messing with it. Which was not a completely ridiculous idea, because one physician at the time wanted to take Alexei's stomach and put it in the Army Medical Museum in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> As for William Beaumont, he eventually got orders to move to St. Louis, where he ended up running a very successful private practice, and largely thanks to his experiments on Alexei St. Martin, became known as the father of gastroenterology. Innovation is often great, and I am all for new ways to understand the human body so that we can help people. And I totally recognize that William Beaumont made a lot of positive contributions to modern medicine. When it comes to Alexei St. Martin, I also recognize that there are experiments some people would be willing to participate in that I would not be. But at best, 
This relationship still feels a bit murky to me, and it made me very grateful for all of the institutional review boards today that help ensure that when people are involved in experiments, that they should be treated with dignity and respect from start to finish. Ultimately, without that accidental gunshot on Mackinac Island, I'm sure we would have found some other way to understand digestion. But this is the version of history we live in. So here's to Alexi St. Martin and all he endured to help us understand our bodies better. Thanks for being here! If you enjoy these sorts of science and people-related stories, I've made quite a few of these by this point, and you're welcome to subscribe to keep up with the new ones. In any case, thanks again for being here. I hope you learned something that makes you think about the world just a little differently, because I know I did, and I'll see you soon.